Thank you to Yanmar for bringing us this video series. Don't settle for less when you can have more. Yanmar's tractors are designed to work as hard as you do for a lifetime. Strengthen your dealership with Yanmar today. Let's dive in into a few different topics. We're going to talk really high level about six different things. Um, I'm going to talk about three, and then Bob is going to come up and share about three. But let's talk about meetings. How many of you are doing regular meetings with your team? All right, good. There's a few of you. That's really great. So when we do meetings, there are three things that we want meetings to accomplish. Three things. When they're done effectively, they're going to unite our team, create clarity, and create accountability. Right? We are trying to get all of our team moving in the same direction together, and that's what meetings do. We're trying to create clarity. We spent a lot of time today talking about vision for each of our departments. That's what meetings are supposed to continue to help us with. We're creating clarity for our team. Where are we going? How are we going to get there? Create that clarity. And third is create accountability. When we have regular meetings with our team, there is accountability that has to take place. They know that we are not just asking them to do something for the sake of doing it, but we're actually going to follow up on it. How many of you struggle with following up on things that you've asked your employees to do? I'm right there with you. Sometimes that's hard. When we have a million things going on, meetings hold us accountable as owners, managers, and coaches too. Right? How many of you sometimes just need your own accountability? I mean, that is, that is me. Me to his T. So when we have meetings, those are the three things that we're constantly trying to do. But a meeting should always propel us forward as an organization or as a group. That is a key part. They should always propel us forward. So when you get into a meeting, what do you talk about? I mean, do you sit there and do you talk about, like, oh, well, the weather's great. Like, what'd you do this weekend? I mean, there's a place for that. There's definitely a place for that. But with our meetings, we're trying to be efficient because time is money. And whenever you pull your employees out of something else they're doing to come to a meeting, you're using your time and money. We, um, we have a Monday morning meeting every week for our team. And we take a maximum of one hour and we sit down at our conference table and we talk about what's going on in our business, right? We're creating clarity, we're creating unity among our teams, and we're moving everybody forward. We also did the math on what that cost us, right? And the cost of our employees not being productive and doing other things for that one hour is the cost of an entry-level employee for us. And so we had to take a step back and say, is this worth our time? We had initially been doing it twice a week, but we cut it back to once a week because we looked at this and said, I think we can accomplish what we need to in one meeting a week instead of two and save money on that with our employees' productivity. But when we sit down for on, to talk about meetings, there are the three things that we always want to cover. We're refocusing on our vision. We talked earlier about how our vision has holes. It's a bucket that we have to refill every single day as managers or coaches. And meetings give us an opportunity to do that. We're going to talk about wins. This is a great time to celebrate the wins and the victories of our team. Sure, you may have given out the gift card to someone who handled a customer great earlier, but it's time to just re-celebrate that at this. Maybe it's the training we were talking about, and they've got a certificate in the mail because they've hit the next level of training. Whatever it is, celebrate wins with the team, because here's what it does. It doesn't only just point out to that person that we're excited about that that one time, but we're continually excited about the growth and the development of our team. It reminds them about that. So we're talking about wins. Another thing that we do um, with our team is we talked about core values. So our core values, I said, were excellence, integrity, and performance. And so when we see someone on our team really go above and beyond in one of our core values and exemplify that, we point that out to the team at our weekly meeting. And we, we do this because then it constantly cements in our people's heads that these are what our core values are and this is the standard of behavior we expect. So, and then the last part of this is how can we help other people in our company? That's the third thing we're going to talk about. 
a lot of times um, in organizations where you all wear a lot of hats, how many of you have an organization where you all feel like you wear a lot of hats, right? Sometimes there's crossovers. As much and hard as we try to keep people in very specific jobs and very specific departments, it's not always realistic. Would you agree? And so the purpose of meetings is that we are trying to find ways to, number one, create clarity in that things are being taken care of the way they need to be taken care of. But how can I help you? I understand that you've got a lot on your plate this week, and my plate's a little bit less full. I mean, maybe this is, we're talking about slow season, and the parts department is redoing all of the parts inventory to get the fast-moving parts closer to the, the counter. Right, so maybe there's an opportunity for someone else in the dealership to come alongside and say, I understand that you've got a lot going on this week. How can I help you move this company forward? And that's what our goals of meetings are. So how often should you have meetings? Well, it depends. I, I, I would say it depends on a few different things. Number one, I would encourage you to have a departmental meeting for five minutes every day before you start. So the service manager will talk to the rest of the service team for five minutes. And we're gonna talk about these things. What were our wins for the day before? What are ways that we can help somebody else create that, if we're in service, how do we make sure our efficiencies are staying high? What are other things we're learning? What is the vision that we're trying to achieve? Everybody needs a reminder on a daily basis. Don't spend more than five minutes, but this is a great time to get everybody in on time. How many of you have employees that you feel like it is a challenge to get in on time? All right, yeah. So if you say, we open our doors at 7 a.m. or whatever time it is, you say, at 6.55, we're going to start our meeting. What, whatever that time is, start five minutes earlier and ask them to be there and be ready to go because then you'll be able to have a time where everybody's showing up, right? There's accountability, whether that's with attendance, whether that's with what they're doing and what they're winning at, but there's that accountability. Um, we do a company meeting once a year, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. Bring everyone together and find a time, and this is separate than our Christmas party, right? Like, I'm all about a good Christmas party, but this is separate than this. This is our company meeting where we get everybody together and we recap where we have been over this last year and what it looks like going forward into the next year. This is not a time we hand out bonus checks. This is not a time, I mean, you can have fun, but, but the purpose of this is to recast our vision on a dealership level, a whole company level, and then move forward with that. So, and then, I mean, and depending on your dealership and what you feel like the flow would work for you, I really encourage you to have a short group meeting, maybe once a week or once every other week, to keep everyone on the same page. Because I think as we work with dealers, what we find too, and I'm sure you're like, well, does Sarah, but service and parts sometimes don't get along, and they have to understand how everyone is continually going towards that same vision, and you can do that by bringing everyone together for a short meeting once a month or, tw or twice a month or every week, depending on what your needs are. So here's the question. How do we get our people engaged in the meeting? How many of you have had a meeting with your employees and they all just sit there and look at you like you're a dancing monkey? Have you guys, anybody had that before? They're like, why are we here? Are there donuts? Like, could this have been done in an email? I mean, sometimes meetings should be done in emails. But here are the two things I'd like to ha just start working through with you. One of the key things that we can do to help get our people engaged is number one, make them responsible for something of the meeting. When you have your employees, this buy-in, where they're going to actually have to say something or present something ahead of time, they're gonna be engaged in not only what you're saying, but what everyone else is saying as well, because they've spent time preparing for this. So, you know, maybe we're, we have a service tech who's been working on a piece of equipment, and you say, hey, why don't you give everyone an update today about this piece of equipment, just spend a minute or two on it, and what was something that you learned because of this? I know that you ran into some issues with this, we got a little upside down, but treat this as a learning experience. Have them be engaged in teaching others during this meeting. The other thing is that when we understand uh, let's see, help them understand how the communication helps everyone else move towards the vision, right? We are constantly casting this vision, and I know I've said that a few times, but it's so important. Communication, not only within your own department, but across different departments, is going to help us move forward as a company. And it is vitally important that we're doing this 
in meetings. So we're asking them to be responsible for something of the meeting that creates buy-in and then help them understand how the communication of these meetings gets everyone involved and helps everyone move forward.